Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba rahabatu fillah Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned a hadith in his sahih in the chapter entitled Bab Tafadil Ahl Iman Fil A'mal The chapter of the different levels of the people of Iman or the people of faith in their deeds. And what we learn from this tarjima or this chapter title of Imam, ba uh, Imam Bukhari is that we learn that Ahli Iman has different levels. And this is a very, very important aspect of the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is to understand that Ahli Iman has different levels. People are on different levels with their Iman and people differ in their deeds and that deeds have different levels. So when you do good deeds, your deeds aren't the same. Meaning, for example, someone who serves his mother or his father is not like the one in deeds or the greatness of that deed is not equal to the person who removes something harmful in the road, although they're both good deeds. Likewise, praying Salat in its time, as the Prophet wasallam said, when he was asked about what are the best deeds in one hadith, I believe it's a hadith of Abdul, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, أَيَعْمَالْ أَحِبُّ اللَّهِ زَوَجَلْ What deed is, is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the Almighty? He said, Salat ala waqtiha, qultu thumma ay, qala bira walidain, qultu thumma ay, qala jihad fi sabilillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, and I believe it's Abdullah bin Mas'ud, I, I can't recall, and at the end of the narration, he said, and if I would have continued to ask, Lazadini, that the Prophet ﷺ would have, would have given me more. He would have given me more if I would have continued. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, showing that the Prophet ﷺ was eager and haris on fulfilling his duty as a prophet, that he was, uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fulfilling his duty in relaying the message of Islam, relaying to us what we need to know and do in order to get to paradise. This was the wadifa or the job of the Prophet It wasn't to teach us to be rocket scientists. It wasn't to teach us to be necessarily doctors or lawyers. Those are beneficial things. But he was there, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as all the NBA were to call us to Tawheed, to call us to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help us put all of those other aspects and those other sciences in perspective. So that means those other sciences are beneficial. We benefit from learning uh, all these, uh, as they say, secular sciences. But al-ilm al-nafiyah, the beneficial knowledge, comes from the deen. And so getting back to the hadith, and this hadith is mentioned in, uh, in the Kitab al-Iman in the chapter of Iman, in the chapter of faith. And uh, in, in the hadith I mentioned to illustrate the point of that deeds uh, have different levels, I mentioned the hadith. And in that hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam was asked by the Sahabi Jalil radiallahu ta'ala I believe it was Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala and he said, you know, which is the best of deeds? And the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, praying Salat in its uh, time. And then he said, and then what? And then he said, uh, you know, serving one's parents or being righteous and pious, uh, being righteous towards one's parents. And then he said, and then what? He said, and then jihad fi sabilillah. So we see from that hadith that uh, the good deeds they have different levels. But moving on, Ayu al Habba, to the hadith at hand that we wanted to read in the chapter 
Bab Tafadl Ahl Iman Fil A'mal, the chapter of the different, the differing, uh, the different levels of Ahl Iman of the people of Iman in deeds, and Ahl Iman. Of course, we know that refers to who the Mu'minin, the word Iman Amina. Uh, 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 from this verb in the uh, past tense, the word iman is derived from that from that verb iman, and ahli iman makes reference to, of course, the people of iman. Who are the people of iman? The mu'minin. And mu'min comes from that same word. And so this is in reference to the fact that Ahli Iman, the people of Iman, the people of faith, the people of Tawheed, they have different levels. And we're going to get to that. And we're going to look at this hadith uh, with some of the benefits that Imam Anowi uh, mentioned in his explanation of this hadith. And so the hadith, the first hadith goes, Hadathana Ismail, Hadathani, Qala Hadathani Malik, An Amr ibn Yahya al Mazini, An Abihi, An Abi Sa'id al Khudri, Radi Allah Tan Anu, An Abihi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qal, Yulkhul Ahl al Jannah al Jannah. وأهل النار النار ثم يقول الله أخرج أخرجوا من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من من خردل من إيمان فيخرجون منها قد أسودوا فيلقون في نهر الحياة أو الحياة شق مالك فينبتون كما تنبت تنبت الحب في جانب السيل ألم ترانا ألم ترانها تخرج صفراء ملتوية قال وهيب قال حدثنا عمر الحياة وقال خرد من خير in this hadith, this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the uh, narrated in Abu uh, uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala, he said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the people of paradise have entered paradise, and the people of the fire have entered the fire, Allah will say, take out of the fire whoever has got faith equal to a mustard seed in his heart. They will come out and by that time they would have burnt and became like coal. And then they will be thrown into the river of Al-Hayat or Al-Haya. It depends the the Rawi uh, Malik he had he he wasn't sure. Uh, and then they will be thrown into this river and it's the river of life you could translate it as as in meaning and they will spring up just as a seed grows on the bank of a rainwater stream. The Prophet ﷺ said, Don't you see that the germinating seed comes out yellow and twisted? In this hadith, it shows us, it affirms for us, of course, that there is a hellfire and there's a jannah. And it also shows us that some of the people from Ahl Iman will spend time in the fire. But it gives glad tidings to the Mu'mini, glad tidings to the believers, glad tidings to Ahl Tawheed that they, even if they do major sins, even if they 
involve themselves in riba. Even if they are chronic zani, they commit adultery all the time in zina and, and fornication. Even if they watch pornography. Even if they are lesbian or gay or whatever the case may be, which are all sinful and major sins in Islam. All of those are major sins in Islam, but they do not make you a disbeliever. So that's very important for us to understand that, that those are from the major sins, and they do not take you out of the fold of Islam. With that being said, Ahl Iman, Ayyu al Habba, it is a refutation uh, of the belief in the Minhaj of those people like the Khawarij and the Takfiriyin and those who are affected by their creed and believe that Ahli Iman has left the fold of Islam due to the major sins. That's incorrect. And so it's very important. And as you see, a lot of the Takfiris and others, what do they spend their time doing? Instead of spending their time in Ibadah, often you find, especially in the West, we're very familiar with them. And it isn't so distant the East of what the people do. Is you'll find that they spend most of their time speaking about leader so-and-so or leader so-and-so. But you may not see them haris or vigilant in their prayer or fasting or whatever acts of ibadah. And this is unlike the original Khawarij. The original Khawarij were very stern in their ibadah. And as we mentioned Prior to this, countless times, the original Khawarij, that they were, they made takfir the believers for the major sins, okay, for their sins, and, but they themselves were very uh, uh, strong in their worship. And this is why the Prophet, والسلام, when he described them, he was describing them to who? To the Sahaba, who were the best of the Ummah, and with that being said, the Prophet ﷺ described them as being, as saying, by saying, ﷺ, that your uh, salat will seem like nothing compared to the salat. And that your fasting will seem like nothing compared to their fasting. Letting us know that these people, they were very stern in their worship. But the people of takfir in this day, many of them, not all of them, but many of them you'll find are some of the worst when it comes to worship and being haris in their ibadah. That you'll see them being known for uh, pornography and known for wasting times on video games and smoking weed and different things like this. And at the same time, they spend their time talking about the leaders. And they don't benefit themselves. They spend their time with anashit and Islamic music, so to speak. And they don't even learn kitab illah wala sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see that they don't even make an effort to learn ilm. So this is the difference between uh, the takfiri khawarij of this day and of the past. And what is also further evidence of this, if you, find, if you look around in many places, uh, what has happened in Saudi Arabia uh, in the early 2000s when they were very active, Al-Qaeda and these groups, you would find some of these guys would even dress as women. They would wear niqab, they would wear hijab in order to get closer to their targets. The original Khawarij would never compromise even something like this to resemble like a woman, to resemble them, make themselves to resemble like a woman in order to... <laughs> in order to, to spread wickedness and evil. So they do evil to spread evil. Whereas the original Khawarij, la, they were they were very vigilant and adhering to the principles of Islam, but they were ignorant. They were overzealous, meaning they were extreme, and they were, uh, you know, so they, they, they adhered to uh, a, a lot of things, but they made, they distanced themselves from the Sunnah of the Prophet and they had uh, wheel facet. They had a misunderstanding and misinterpretation of the nusuls, of the Quran, and how to practice it, and how to arbitrate, and all the other uh, characteristics that they had, which were madhmum, which were disliked. And so, Ahabatifillah, moving back to the hadith itself, the hadith also shows us 
that there is a river in Jannah. So we believe this. This is what Ahli Iman believes. And so I want to mention this because what you'll find, uh, and especially we have this in the West, in America, in the UK, in France, in other places, that you'll find uh, modernists and secularists that are Muslim, inshallah ta'ala, and there may be differences of opinion about this, and it also depends on the particular individual's extent of deviance. However, you'll find amongst them many who don't believe in much of the sunnah because they say it goes against their intellect. They say, no, that doesn't make sense to me, that there's a river uh, called Hayat in Jannah. It just, I just can't imagine that. So I believe instead such and such. Or I believe that it means this. So what you find, because they are similar, uh, they are similar to some of the original sects of the Aklaniyun, meaning those people who gave preference to their intellect and intellectual discourse and logic over the Nasus. That you'll find that because of this, this makes them uh, make inkar or negate a lot of the sunnah. Because it just doesn't make sense to them. And so this is a very dangerous aqidah. So Ahl sunnah takes from hadith like this that there is a river called Hayat. We believe in that because we believe this is an authentic hadith, so we believe it. We believe that. And... In it, the Prophet ﷺ said, take out, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, take out of the fire whoever has got faith equal to a mustard seed in his heart. This gives us, uh, this affirms for us, being ahla tawheed, that we have a chance that if you die on Iman, die as a, a Muslim, Ya Yonas, Ya Yonadina Amanu, wa taqullah haqqa taqati wa la tumutunna illa wa anta muslimun. O you who believe, uh, don't die except in a state of Islam. Uh, fear Allah and don't die except in a state of Islam. Don't die except that you're a believer. So this is glad tidings for the mu'mineen that even as wicked as we, uh, many of us are, and we have so many sins, and I'm talking about myself first before I talk about you, that we have hope to get out of the fire. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. If we die on Tawheed, this is why it's so important and why our Dawah and our call is to Tawheed. Tawheed Awalin. Tawheed first. And we keep talking about it. I know some people are tired of hearing about Tawheed, but this is, this is our affair that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be worshipped alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to worship Him and Him alone. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. So die upon that. And do not die except in a state of Iman. So this is glad tidings for Ahli Iman. Let's get to some of the benefits that Imam Nawawi mentioned about this hadith before we uh, end our brief discussion. Some of the fuwaid, Imam Nawawi said, في هذا الحديث he said, from this hadith, there is uh, various types of, of knowledge. Or there's very various types of knowledge contained in this hadith. Or or benefits, if you will. He said, Minha Lahu Ahla Iman fil Amal. And from those benefits is included in the chapter heading, which is that the people of Iman have different levels in their deeds. There are different levels of Iman and there's different levels of deeds. Also letting us know that Iman fluctuates. We're not always at the same. Sometimes you feel your Iman is very strong. Sometimes you feel weak. Okay, this is, that's natural. Don't be uh, fearful about that. But at the same time, be fearful to the extent that you want to improve yourself. You want to better yourself. You want to strengthen your iman. You want to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Also from this hadith, is this hadith affirms for us that a group from Ahli Iman, دخول طائفة من عصات المواهدين النار, that some, this hadith affirms for us that a group from the uh, sinners, from the people of Tawheed, Muahidun, will enter the fire. 
That lets us know that you're not safe just because you're a Muslim. Unlike some of the people, some of the Murjia and other sects, they believe that Iman is the same. You either have a complete faith or you have no faith. You're either a believer or you're a disbeliever. Meaning your Iman doesn't, it doesn't fluctuate and deeds are not a part of your Iman. This is what the Murjia believe. And they have various beliefs within that, uh, within that uh, spectrum. However, uh, Ahl Iman believes that there are different levels of Iman, and this hadith is one of the hadith, uh, a hadith which, which illustrates for that. So this hadith also illustrates for us, as we mentioned, that that a group from the sinners from the people of Tawheed will enter Iman, so that uh, enter the fire, letting us know that Iman has different levels, that you could be a wicked sinner, but still be a person of Tawheed. Even your Tawheed could be weak, but you still believe that there's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who should be worshipped and you direct your worship to Allah but you have many shortcomings, many major sins that you involve yourself in. And likewise, Ahl Iman, they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the person who is the major sinner from the people of Muahidun, the, the people of Tawheed, is that they uh, they are tahta mashiyatillah that they're under the mercy and discretion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, uh, insha, yaghfir lahum, wa insha, yu'adhabuhum. That if he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, he will punish them. And if he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, he will forgive them. That's from Allah. So you cannot determine, you can't say, I know sister so-and-so, she's always doing this. She's going to be in the fire. You can't say that. You can't say that because you don't know her state and you don't know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for her. Nor do you know what Allah has in store for you. So be careful of being arrogant with regards to Iman. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that those people who do those wicked sins, that they will come out of the fire. We learn that. Imam Anawi also said in this hadith it contains that the people of wickedness will, 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 will uh, you know wicked uh sinners from the people of Iman, meaning that they are the people of Tawheed, they are uh, Muslim, that the people who do the major sins from the Wahideen, they do not stay in the fire forever. That's the belief of Ahl Sunnah. And then he says, Ahl Sunnah. He said that this is the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah. Uh, which differs from the Khawarij. This differs from what the Khawarij believe. The Khawarij believe something else. They believe something different to this. As we said, they believe ahla, They believe that you're, if you're a major sinner, you're a disbeliever and you're in the fire forever. And the Ma'tazila, they believe you're, uh, uh, you know, manzilatain, that you're neither in the fire, you're neither in Jannah. We don't know where they came. They came up with this from their own uh, rationale. Uh... And there are many, he said, there are many clear texts or clear evidences from the book, meaning the book of Allah, and the sunnah, the sunnah, the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ijma salaf al-ummah, and the consensus of the salaf of this ummah, meaning the salaf al-salih, meaning the pious predecessors of this ummah. And he said, and this is in accordance with what we mentioned from Ahl Sunnah. So Imam Anawi was affirming for us that this is the belief, Ittiqad, of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And then he said, Wafihi an al A'mal min al Iman. And also from this, and this is a rud or refutation of the Murjia, he said that the deeds are from Iman. He said, deeds are from Iman. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah believes what about Iman? They believe Iman is al-qaw, wa'amal, uh, amal al-jawarih, 
وإيمان بالقلب you know في في القلب that إيمان faith is contained in the heart this is the أصل and it's contained uh, on your deeds you meaning deeds are a part of إيمان and your statements of the tongue that's a part of إيمان and we've illustrated this countless times in our lessons about examples but let's take Salat for example Salat is a physical action which is also it's a it's from the amal it's from the deeds likewise the salat has dhikr in it contains dhikr in it, recitation of the quran that's on the tongue likewise the salat requires tu'manina and uh, iman billah to have it accepted so it contains in 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 one fashion or another salat contains all of those aspects of iman statements of the tongue actions of the limbs actions of the heart And then he said, and this is in accordance with the statement of the Prophet وسلم, where he said, the, uh, you know, if they have a mustard seed of Iman, letting us know. And he said, Murad, what is meant here, uh, that what is, uh, after, you know, contained in someone's heart after Tawheed, meaning that they believe and actualize uh, Tawheed, by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and, and whatever is increased based upon that is a part of Iman and bi'idnillah because they have Tawheed and they have, you know, they have Iman that they will be taken out of the fire. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.